Hello, welcome to my planet. Today I'm going to be reviewing the game Century Golems, which came out this year in 2017. It retails for $39.99, which does not include the playmat. This is a re-implemented version of Century Spice Road, which is basically a game where you're you're in a spice trade, and this one is the exact same game, but it is a golem edition. So you are using golems instead of spices. I think that this one is a lot prettier of a game, um, but it will not be getting any expansions. The Century Spice Road, I believe, is going to have one or two expansions to it with new content, maybe new cards, new pieces or something. Um, and this one is a one of, so it will not have any of those. So that's something to consider if you are looking into getting this. I do think that getting the playmat is a good investment. I do think that with most games that come with playmats, some of them are just for like graphically pleasing to the eye way to play your game, but for this one it really does help you organize the cards. Similar to Machi Koro if you've played it, it has spaces for all the cards to go and for all the pieces that you'll need, so while it is not completely necessary, it does make the quality of playing a lot better, so I would recommend getting this playmat. This is ages 8 plus, it's for 2 to 5 players, and it should take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to play. I do think that it took us around that time to play, maybe on the higher side when we were first trying to learn how, but once we got the hang of it, it really wasn't that hard at all. You kind of work up a good pace, and everybody has their own goal for the game, <laughs> their own goal um, for the game. It is a little bit tricky to try and plan what you're doing when you know that like when you know that one to four people are going to be vying for the same cards that you are but as long as you keep up with your own pace and you keep up with your own plan then you do pretty well I think is you are crystal trade and you are trading gems so that you can buy golems golems are like these big rock guys who all have special functions each card has its own cute little flavor where there will be a golem who's helping a woman smash some grapes for some wine or harvesting grain or fixing a waterfall that was damaged is that possible or cutting down a tree for firewood or something um and while that part isn't necessary to the gameplay it is a really really cute part of it so you're using gems that you trade up there are four different kinds of gems and they have increasing value from the or the green gem I think it's the yellow from the yellow gem to the pink gem and you can trade up so that you can get the higher value gem well it's not technically of a higher value it's harder to get so it is worthwhile trying to get it there are cards that help you magically turn your gem into a higher gem so you can like go from a yellow to a green or a blue to a pink or there's one that can help you hop up too so instead of going from a yellow to a green you can go from a yellow directly to a blue there's also um, other ones that you'll manually trade so let's say you have four yellow and you can trade that for a green and a blue or you have two pink and you can trade that for five yellow and a green or five yellow and two green or two greens and three blues or whatever like there's a bunch of different cards that you can use that for this game was purchased at gen con this past year i don't know where else they're selling it i don't know if they're doing like a con only different conventions they're going to or if they're going to be selling it in stores but i would check out your local game store just in case um give them a call see if they have it if they don't though the century spice road is the exact same gameplay so cute little golem flavor aside it is still worth a play definitely still worth a play it's kind of an addicting game if you play it once you're like determined to play it again to like crack the game and figure out what the best combination of like different gem cards is it's almost like a mini deck builder you're like building up your own queue of cards that you can use for the whole game 
So depending on what cards you get, you could have a really good game, you could have a really bad game. It's really good. I quite enjoyed it. The, the version that was at Gen Con came in this box here, which is very Iron Giant-esque box. These are what the gems look like. There are four different colors of gem. They all come in these little plastic containers. They're of a pretty decent quality. They're just a regular plastic gem. Um, pretty standard to any board game pieces. It comes with quite a few of them, but still probably don't lose them. The Inside the box, there is a cover to this so that they don't go all wumbly jumbly when you close the box and accidentally flip it over or something. And these are the things that you use to buy the golems. So down here is the cost. So this one costs two green and two blue, and it gives you 10 victory points at the end. And they all have different ones. So this one will have one yellow, two blue, and one pink, and he's the male guy. He gives you 12 points at the end. If you get him early on, and he's in the front, then you could get an additional one to three victory points, which is pretty solid, because if you do that a couple of times, you've essentially gotten yourself an extra golem's cost. The little coins have a C on them for century. Oddly enough, the bronze coin is worth more than the silver coin, which doesn't really make sense if you think about actual money and actual metals value. Bronze is never worth more than silver, but in this game the bronze is, so don't get that goofed up, because otherwise you'll be playing it wrong, and nobody likes playing things wrong, because why would you? The playmat here comes in this little box, and this here is essentially your board space. Up here is where you'll put your little containers for the gems, and then you'll have golem cards, you'll have cards that you can choose from to build up your deck with, and then the draw piles. It's pretty simple. Um, it smells kind of like rubber, or like the dentist. A little bit like the dentist, <laughs> but I'm sure if you just air it out it won't smell like that. But as you can see, there's like a lot of places for your cards to go, and if you just had to do this on your table, it would end up looking probably kind of messy and they would get moved around and you'd have to like decide where they go again and where would you put the gems and where would you put the coins like you know they go up here but if you didn't have the playmat it would just be a little bit harder to do which is why I for sure recommend you just getting the playmat if you can find it I know that sometimes that might be a little bit harder to find um, I would say I give this probably like an eight and a half out of ten it's really really easy to play. When we played it, um, we did a, a demo at Gen Con the first time that we played. And it was very simple. We ran through the whole thing in half hour or so, maybe a little bit longer. I think you can play this with gamers of all strengths and all levels, and it would be just as fun for them as it would be for someone of a higher level versus a lower level uh, experience of gameplay. Um, for sure, go to your local game store, check it out, see if they have it, see if they have Spice World, check that out, see if you like that flavor a little bit better. Um, and it's just a really pretty game. Sometimes it's nice to just play games that are like really nice looking instead of just normal, every everyday gamey kind of game. Well, I'll see you later. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more board game reviews. Thank you for visiting my planet. See you later. Bye-bye.